chances are that you, you, you start to lose evidence. Investigators remain convinced that Kevin Neal was their primary suspect. We pretty much narrowed everything down to Kevin. So plenty of circumstantial evidence, but no direct evidence at that point. But would forensic entomology provide the answers? Well, the insects are definitely a time marker. And how significant were these small seeds? The seeds would only have grown at the creek and would not have grown at the property. But when the defense considered the evidence, they argued the killer was still at large. They fixed their focus, put their blinders on, and built a case to convict Kevin Neal. Could the defense prove the prosecution had misinterpreted crucial forensic evidence? The search for missing children India Smith and Cody Smith McGraw ended in tragedy. Two months after they had disappeared, their bodies were discovered. It just breaks your heart as a parent to see children uh, have to lose their life. For Sue, she loved her kids. She didn't deserve to have her children taken from her like this. Investigators believe the children's stepfather, Kevin Neal, was the prime suspect. You have to follow where the evidence leads. And every step of the way, the evidence led back to Kevin. We knew that Sue and Kevin were fighting. There were inconsistencies in the things that he had said. Prosecuting attorney Nick Salvaggio was building a case against Kevin Neal. The circumstances in which they were found clearly indicated that this was homicidal violence. What was unknown and what was going to be a challenge for the prosecution is to determine how they died and why they were put there. Salvaggio began with the motive. He was aware that Neil's marriage was strained. Investigators learned Kevin Neal had a conversation with a fellow inmate at the Champaign County Jail approximately a month before the children disappeared. The inmate told Kevin Neal of a uh, affair that Sue Neal was having with another individual. On hearing this, Neal's response was chilling. Kevin Neal said, the way you hurt someone is you hurt someone they love. The prosecution believed this was firm evidence of Neal's motive. Kevin Neal wanted to hurt Sue Neal, and the way he knew how to hurt her was to hurt the children. But there was a major issue to address. Finding the children on September 6 presented a real prosecutorial challenge for us. Kevin Neal had been incarcerated since July 23rd. We needed to somehow find out whether the children could have been placed at that scene prior to July 23rd. Because if we couldn't prove, then Kevin Neal could not be held responsible for their deaths. The prosecution returned to the only evidence from the crime scene, the insects found in the remains. They asked forensic entomologist Dr. Neil Haskell to determine if the presence of insects could prove when the children had died. In murder cases, the forensic entomologist can answer the time when we expect the person has died based on the, the insects. Entomologists use the rate at which certain insects enter and grow within a dead body as a measure of time. In my processing of a case, what I'd like to do is, is first take a look at, at what species or what uh, groups of insects we have. In this case, Dr. Haskell identified two species of fly. But the lack of a secondary screw worm seemed significant. I would certainly expect to find the secondary screw worm present in August or September if that's when the individual died. In late summer, the secondary screw worm is usually one of the first species of flies to inhabit a corpse. They're only attracted to fresh carrion. Secondary screw worms are typically found in Ohio during the late summer months. The absence of the secondary screw worm suggests that the deaths had to have been earlier in the July period. Haskell also focused on the black soldier flies discovered in the bodies. The black soldier fly is not found uh, to be active on a dead body until 
uh, it gets into the advanced decomposition stages. The black soldier fly is a much later comer and anywhere from two to four weeks after the decomposition has progressed extensively in the summertime. The life stage of the black soldier fly was particularly significant to Haskell. The specimens were uh, advanced larvae. It takes a long time to get to that life stage. Once a female lays her eggs, they take a set amount of time to hatch and progress through each stage. So uh, the fact that it was a mature third stage instar was significant. Based on his findings, Haskell calculated a time frame of when he believed the children had been murdered. The final conclusions that I reached when all of these different specimens uh, and species were taken in consideration was an interval sometime between the 9th and the 14th of July. Haskell's findings were crucial to the prosecution's case. Kevin Neal had reported the children missing on July 9th and was later incarcerated on July 23rd. Dr. Haskell was able to give us at the time of death at between July 9th and July 14th, and without that, our case would have collapsed. But investigators still had to find evidence to prove Neil had committed the murders. At this point, what was missing is the ability to place Kevin Neal at the scene. Evidence taken from the initial search of the Neal's home was closely analyzed. Investigators seized from the Neal home a blue blanket that was conspicuously placed in one of the children's bedrooms. The blanket was seized because it had uh, some soil debris and seeds on it. Investigators believe the seeds on the blanket might provide vital clues. It's reasonable to infer that Kevin Neal used the blue blanket to wrap the children up transport them to the cemetery and dump their bodies. Salvaggio sent the seeds to analyst Anne Daniel. She had to try and determine where they had originated from. There were only two types of seeds that were brought to us. One was very easy to recognize because it's something that I planted hundreds of samples a day. The seed was identified as Kentucky blue grass a common plant found in most Ohio lawns. It's a seed that's found about everywhere. But the second seed was less prevalent. The second sample that we had was identified as Gallium apparine. It's known as catchweed bed straw, and it has uh, very distinct characteristics. They're very prickly on the outside. Gallium apparine has seeds that can easily catch on clothing. The plant itself is very fragile. Stepping on it, walking on it, kills it off. Gallium apparine would be found in a place that was unkept. Daniel tried to establish whether the plant could be found at the Nettle Creek Cemetery where the bodies were discovered. We went down to the grave site. It had been trampled all around where people were working and taking the bodies out. So for us to try to find a plant was very difficult. At first, there were no obvious signs of the plant. We didn't find a plant then, but we did see seeds. So we pulled, I think it was about seven seeds, and immediately I knew it was that seed, Yellow Maparine. The seed could be the link the 